Good morning, Lighthouse family, and good morning to all of you who are guests that are watching our online service, and just want to welcome you uh, again to our service here online, the online platform, and so grateful for this platform because uh, we were desperately in need of uh, an online platform. Um, we, uh, were, were, we actually contracted the uh, corona variant uh, a few weeks ago and were very sick uh, for about two weeks. And so very grateful for this platform because we were still able to receive the message and be connected even though we weren't. And uh, as you heard in the welcome, today is a, uh, a very special day. Uh, it is bittersweet uh, for us, and uh, we are doing our very best to embrace this with, with great faith uh, that God is, is, is going to work, and He's going to work through you, He's going to work through us. And, uh, you know, just want to encourage you uh, today as, as we begin this service. Uh, what a privilege, as I said earlier, what a privilege it has been. Uh, to lead the Lighthouse region uh, for the time, and to lead different ministries in the Lighthouse region. Uh, we, we are honored uh, that you were so faithful to us. And so I wanted to go ahead and begin our message today uh, with my wife, and we're going to go ahead and start with a word of prayer before we get into it. Pray with me if you would. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for Jesus that made all of this possible. God, we know that He came here to close the gap between us and you and each other. And we want to ask you, Father, to continue to close that gap, to continue, Father, to bring us closer to you and help us to walk with you, help us to, to walk in the blessing that it is, Father, that we can have a relationship with you and that Jesus paved the way so we can be your sons and daughters and walk as your children and be close to you. We ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will speak to all of us this morning, and that you'll speak, Father, uh, to our hearts and our needs. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you for His Word, and use us through your Spirit. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to begin with is just to share uh, what, what, a, what an incredible blessing uh, to be a part of a family that, that supports you. And, and as I shared a little while ago, we were sick for a couple of weeks. And, and it's kind of like a full circle moment. When we arrived 17, close to 17 years ago, we didn't come here with strength. We came here with needs and, and, and with weakness. And, and the region supported us, uh, specifically the, the single ministry, the staff at that time, and also the, the, the Spanish ministry. Well, incredibly supportive of us mm -hmm. and, and gave us when we were weak they gave us faith and then we in turn turned it around and then we got to come full circle uh you know a couple weeks ago we got very sick and and i just want to say thank you to all the people that prayed for us mm -hmm. that brought us food that sent us messages of encouragement yeah. i mean it's like wow in the beginning and in the end we needed support and we needed strength and we needed help and this ministry, this spiritual family provided it for us. Yeah. So we love you and we are so, so grateful for the Lighthouse family. Mm -hmm. And if you're a guest with us today, I just want to encourage you to, to become a part of, of God's kingdom wherever you are. But become a part of God's church and His family because there are moments where we need that support, mm -hmm. where we need that help but then we can turn around when we're strong and provide it for others. So as we start out today, I want to just encourage you uh, with, with this idea that uh, we are, are so blessed to have Jesus give us promises that, that fill our lives. And, and, and so I want to just share that the, the message today is a spirit-empowered life. And Jesus gave us these words, I am with you when you are with me. You know, the context, uh, this is our last service today that we're going to be uh, speaking with you living here in the region. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll be back and I'm pretty sure, you know, we're going to get the opportunity uh, to, to be with you again. But living here, being a part of this family, it is our last service. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's, a, there's a certain amount of grief and pain that comes with that. Mm -hmm. Separation is difficult. 
to think forward and say, man, it's not going to be the same. You know, and, and just so we put it in context, we've never lived in a ministry as long as we've lived here. Close to 17 years. Our early ministry years were filled with transition. You know, we would be here for a, in a ministry for a certain amount of time, and then we would move, and then we would move, and then we would move. But we've been here almost 17 years. We've never been any place that long. And it is difficult because we've been here so long. Because we received strength. We received support. We received confidence. And so I really want us to address this issue of separation today because Jesus addressed it head on and how he can close the gap. And I uh, want to just share this verse with you in John chapter 16. And he shared with the disciples his plans. And he said here, Jesus went on to say, in a little while, you will see me no more. Then after a little while, you'll see me again. Again, this is the separation. Jesus was going to be with the Father and he was going to die for our sins and be raised on the third day. He says, I'm not going to be with you guys. Uh, but then a little later, you're going to see me again. And I'm going to be with you. And he goes on to say in verse 22 of the same chapter, John 16. So with you, now is it your time of grief. But I will see you again and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything very truly i tell you my father will give you whatever you ask in my name what an incredible promise and he goes on to finish this statement until now you have not asked me for anything in my name ask and you'll receive and your joy will be complete you see this promise that jesus give us gives us would not have been fulfilled unless there was a separation and he goes on to share about this whole idea of the Holy Spirit coming to take His place mm -hmm. and the promises that were going to take His place. And so I want to, the Lord's going to share here in a second, but I just want to say this, to the degree that you are with Jesus, He will be with you. And this is an incredible promise that Jesus gave the disciples and He gives us. And here's the real question. Do you believe the promise of Jesus. I'm going to let Laura share now about these verses. Uh, good morning. Uh, it is great to be with all of you today. I'm so, so grateful to be here. And I really um, just want to share what, what it means uh, for me, what it has meant to be here in the Lighthouse, and also what it means to have a friendship with Jesus, how to grow in that so that we can continue to grow, all of us. I want to. Uh, so as Peter shared, I, I'm really grateful. I'm so grateful to God for the privilege of being here. I have thoroughly enjoyed this ministry. I have loved our women's days. I have loved our VBS. I've loved the services, the worship. It just fills me. My happy place is here at church. It is, I love being here. This is my home and you will always be my family and my friends and our home. Uh, and I want, I know that God wants that friendship for us to have it with Jesus and with Him. And so I just wanted to say uh, something that helped me a lot in my friendship with Jesus. Um, uh, recently when we had COVID, um, it was very hard because we're, you know, se seasons are difficult when they change and we're in a season where we're, there's always, life is full of, you know, transitions and we're in one now. And so that was very hard. And then on top of that, we got COVID. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so hard to feel sick and to be just feeling sometimes, you know, that's the spiritual battle. You feel like you're being attacked when you're already weak. Hmm. And, but I want you to know something that I've learned is that I needed to trust God in my pain. I needed to trust him and, and know that Jesus was with me through it. And as Peter said, God showed his goodness was all around us through the disciples, through all of you reaching out to us and encouraging us. But I want to just ask you, how is your friendship with Jesus? Um, because I know he wants to, he wanted during the time I was sick, um, he wanted to put doubt in my mind about God. Um, he wanted to put discouragement, you know, discouragement. Um, I was, it, it just takes, it, 
it saps our energy, it, it blurs our vision, it makes us want to quit, it makes us even more tired. And I feel like I was, I had to really decide, was I going to let discouragement take over or was I going to, you know, go really be close in my friendship with Jesus? So I decided, you know what, I'm not going to let Satan put doubt in my mind. I'm not going to let, I'm going to trust God and grow in my friendship with Jesus through this time. And I really believe that is how we are going to go forward, all of us, with faith. And as we go through transitions, that we can make the best of it because we have a friendship with Jesus that is going to be, that's going to keep us going. And maybe that was, you know, maybe you were passionate about your friendship with Jesus in the past. But I want you to know you can have that again, yeah. because we're just like you. We have our ups and downs. We have to. We go through challenging things, but we are determined to keep our friendship with Jesus and our relationship with God. And you can have that too. You can start fresh today, like mm -hmm. I had to do after COVID, because I felt like I was not, you know, doing well in so many ways. Um, but you can do that. God, you are very important to the kingdom of God. God wants to use you. God is wants to use all of us and he loves you dearly and we love you dearly and we want we want you to know you can start fresh with Jesus today. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. We commit that and I know that if you're not passionate, if you don't feel like oh, I'm not as passionate as I have been, then you can start fresh. Yeah. Again. And I just want to give a special thank you also to the new fields, the mosses, uh, the Sernas, the Tejadas, all the, the, the Medes, absolutely, the Molinas, Isaiah and Vanessa, Jose and Jalissa, the staff family that we have here. I want you to know you can be so encouraged because you have an incredible group of men and women that have great integrity and great faith and love for you. But I am personally so grateful for their friendship mm -hmm. and that has inspired me and encouraged me and been a joy to me during this time. But I please... Uh, just remember your friendship with Jesus, he's there for you and he wants to start fresh with you today and every day. And he, he doesn't want us to give in to discouragement. We all mess up. That's human, nat yeah. human nature, but we never want to quit. That's right. Never, ever, ever quit because messing up is one thing, but quitting, that's not an option. For me, I'm, it's not an option, even though I've had very challenging times. So. I wanted to share that, and I know it's going to be great this new season for all of us. And let's not leave out Raymond Ramos and Laura Martinez yes. as a part of our staff. Yes. Uh, you guys are treasures in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I amen everything that Laura just said because it, it is such an incredible blessing to be surrounded by great witnesses of, mm -hmm. of faith. Mm -hmm. And yes, here's the thing about when we got sick. Both of us were vaccinated. And, you know, the world was telling us, hey, you're, you're completely immune. You've been vaccinated. Uh-uh. That's not what happened. We still got the variant. And it threw us for a loop, you know, to get that sick when you've been vaccinated, when you've been told. Now, and this is a really good lesson for us to put our trust in God. And, and sometimes we put our trust in people and circumstances, and they're not trustworthy. Uh, God is the one who's trusted, and He used it. He used it to really boil down our faith and our trust in Him, mm -hmm. and then to show us one more time that my people have got your back. They're going to help you. They're going to take care of you in your weakness. Mm -hmm. So we look at this uh, next verse that Jesus shared with His disciples, and this is the incredible promise that He gave us. I'm going to leave, but somebody's going to take my place. And he says here in verse 13, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you in all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what will make known to you. And you see this triangle, the God of God, our Father, Jesus, the Son, and now the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is saying, listen, I'm going to leave, but, but the Holy Spirit's going to take my place. And what I want to share with us today is how the Holy Spirit closes 
the gap between us and God, us and Jesus, and even between each other. And he goes on in verse 15, he says, All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what He will make known to you. And so Jesus says, I've received everything from the Father, and I'm going to give it to you through the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And, and this is such an incredible, incredible blessing. We get to see a snapshot of this in the book of Acts. We get to see ordinary men and women who walked with Jesus. And and they weren't special. I mean, we see them now as heroes and they did these incredible things. But people who knew them, people who were around them, they realized, man, these are just ordinary people. What made the difference is they walked with Jesus. And it says here in Acts chapter 4 about Peter and James. Mm -hmm. And, and their courage. In verse 13, it says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Notice the, the characteristic here. What made them extraordinary was not that they were, you know, to themselves, these powerful people. They knew who they were. But what they realized was these men are extraordinary because of their walk with Jesus. There's a presence about them. There's courage. They went from fear to faith. They went from from fear to courage. And they spoke boldly. They, They spoke fearlessly because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. And this all started, this whole situation in Acts chapter 3, because of their prayer life. Mm -hmm. They were going up to the temple in the afternoon to pray. And because of that that humility, God filled them with courage. God filled them with power. Mm -hmm. God filled them with a connection with each other. And He used them. And that's why the, the, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they took note and they saw And so this is an encouragement for you and I to know that you and I, Laura and I, and I just want you guys to know we're ordinary people. We have our moments of of strength and faith, but we have our moments of weakness. And it all really comes back to our relationship with God. As Laura shared, our relationship with Jesus. You know, and, and I know for a fact I'm strong when I'm walking with Jesus. But when I'm not, I can see my humanity I can see my fear. I can see the hardness. And as Laura shared, there's never a moment where you can't turn and start walking with Jesus. No matter what you feel, no matter what's going on, you can always start fresh and start walking with Jesus. It goes on to say when they were praying all together after they were released, because they couldn't do anything. They had no words to refute what they'd done and the miracles. Acts chapter 4 and verse 29, when they went back with the rest of the believers, they gathered together and they prayed this incredible prayer that you and I can pray and you and I can have the same faith and conviction that we're ordinary people, but God hears us. Now, Lord, verse 29 of Acts 4, now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand and to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they had prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is what it looks like to walk with Jesus. There's something that comes over you. There's something that that takes over when we're weak and we feel like, man, I don't know. The Holy Spirit takes over and fills us with boldness, with courage, with strength, and with power. And God just wanted to put His seal on this prayer, and He shook the place. They had like their their tremor in that building, just so that they would know, hey, I'm with you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm with, with what you're about. I'm with your courage. I'm with for you standing up for Jesus. I'm with you. When you stand up for me and you walk with me, I'm going to walk with you and I'm going to be with you. 
And that's what he did. And, and I'm going to let Laura share about this whole idea of how the Holy Spirit closes the gap and helps us to remain connected to God and to each other. Amen. Uh, so th I love the scripture in Acts 4 because it says that they were together and, you know, their prayer was powerful and they prayed. They could have been, you know, running for cover. They could have been hiding and they decided to pray. They decided to draw near to God. And because of that, the early church was birthed really through prayer, through the power of prayer. And so I want to encourage you. That's what I have had to do throughout these many years in the ministry is I have I've done my I prayer walks and I, I know that's how I've stayed connected with God and I want to share a, kind of a, an example of how we need prayer we need and know that God hears every prayer you pray that God is faithful that God is holy that God is good and he wants to give us the desires of our heart that's what Psalm 37 verse 4 says and he's there for you in the big things and the small things and as we were preparing this, I was remembering a time when um, m many years back, but uh, we were in Miami airport and we had flown in from Mexico City at that time, long time ago, and our children were small and Peter gave me the children. He said, please watch the children. And he gave me all four passports, all four. And so we got to the hotel where we were staying and I had the children, that was great, but I had lost all four passports in Miami airport. And so we, we were like, oh no, we were, this is one example I could give you many where we have relied on prayer. So we prayed, hmm. God, please help us to somehow find these passports in my, that they will turn up. And if you can believe it, we got a phone call from a, a chauffeur in Miami airport that somehow found uh, that our, our number was there also in the in there and they contacted us and he drove us out and he drove and brought us the passports it was a miracle of God and I just share that because that's like sometimes you go oh that that would be a very stressful thing but there have been I could give you so many examples over the years of when we have prayed and God has, has, has come through powerfully, even right now doing this class, because we're very, um, we're just recovering from being sick and we're good, but we're still tired and we've been moving and we prayed for strength today and God has given us strength. And we, we prayed for Lauren to have a, be able to have a baby and now her and Jeremiah are having twins. So sometimes you get more than you could ask or imagine when you pray. Hmm. But I just want to encourage you, don't lose faith in your prayers. I'm still waiting for some of my prayers to be answered. Don't lose faith in your prayers. Keep praying, keep believing, God is working. And when you start to lose faith or you're getting a little bit doubtful, that's when we need to praise God and say, God, thank you. Thank you for answer that you're working right now, even though I don't see it. Yeah. Because when we do see the answered prayer, all, we see the result of God be, having worked. So when we're not sure, we can praise God ahead of time. God, I know you're working, and we trust in that. And lastly, I just want to encourage you with, the, I love that it says they, they went out and preached with boldness. And I want you to know, I want to do what our motto in life, our um, you know, vi mission and vision in, in Lighthouse is, you know, to love God, live change, and light the way. And I'm going to continue to do that. And I want to be bold because we have the solution. Jesus is the only one that can save this world. He is the only solution. Mm -hmm. So I am going, I want to be like they were in Acts 4. As I get older, I don't want to lose my zeal. I want to continue to have zeal and continue to share God's word. There are so many open people. Jesus said that. I believe Jesus. He said the harvest is ripe. Mm -hmm. So please, when you're in the grocery store, when you're in Target, when you're at school or at work, know that God wants to use you there. He really does. And let's share each with each other all the victories Amen. and all the ways that God's Spirit is working through us. God wants us to share the message boldly. Amen. Amen. And I want to just encourage us uh, with, with some, some takeaways from today's message. And then we're going to celebrate the communion and, and what Jesus did for us. But a spirit-empowered life means that you're daily spending time with Jesus. And, and I just want to encourage us. We live in a time where we're incredibly distracted by all kinds of things. There's all kinds of things vying for our attention. We need to say, no, I, 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 need, I need time with Jesus. I need to stop 
what I'm doing. I need to tr turn everything off and I need to spend time with Jesus before I get out and go and do my thing. That's where the power came from. That's where the Holy Spirit showed up with the disciples. He showed up so many times in our own lives. And you know, it just doesn't work when you try to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. You're going to end up drifting back to that old ways, your old lifestyle, your old character, that moodiness, the highs and lows. But, but you and I need to make sure we're staying connected to Jesus. He gave us the promises, but it's our responsibility to grab them and walk in them. And also, as Laura shared, to fight for your faith. Don't fight for your faith just to remain, but to grow. And, and that's really what happened these last few weeks. Our faith grew, but it came at a price. It was a challenge. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy. And the last thing is what Laura shared too is, let's stay focused no matter where we are on our mission to follow Jesus as disciples, connect His family, and light the way. There's so many other people out there that are hungry to know about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, the word has not gotten out. In fact, it, for, for the younger generation, I just want to encourage you mm -hmm. to, to light the way because there's such a, a tremendous need right now in, in the lives of young people to know about who Jesus really is. Not, not what they've experienced at church or, you know, the person next door who claimed to be a Christian. No, I mean, really somebody who walked with Jesus. And you and I can be that. And so I just want to encourage all of us to continue on our mission. And know this, everything that we have, as I shared in the beginning in the welcome, even pain of separation is a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't have the relationships with my wife, with my family, with the church, if it weren't for what Jesus went through for me. Mm -hmm. Even the, the painful separation of saying goodbye that's a blessing because I wouldn't have that. I wouldn't have that pain. I wouldn't feel that, 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 that loss, that grief. You know, our, our kids are going to be staying here in California. But man, I'm so grateful because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. I'm closer to my kids than maybe my parents were to us as children. You know, and, and I treasure that. And it's all because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Let's never forget. And that's why we take the communion every week. Even when it's difficult, we remember, Jesus, you went through it so that I can embrace this difficulty with faith. Let's pray for the communion. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for Jesus. We want to honor him. We want to lift up his body. We want to lift up his blood and honor what he did for us on the cross. Because God, our lives have been changed and they continue to be changed. Bless this communion. Bless your church here in West Covina and around the world that we can continue to be filled with your Spirit and empowered by your Spirit and have lives that shake up the world. We love you, God. Thank you for everything we have. Thank you for Jesus. And we pray all these things in His name. Amen. 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 Love you.